questions from anybody, any topics as we wait for others to join? Um, anybody uh, wanting to share experiences changing um, or making any changes based on our discussion? Or challenges? <laughs> I know what I need to do, but it's hard. <laughs> get started. Any comfortable seated posture. Spine erect, comfortably erect. Shoulders relaxed. Three D breaths. part of your body where you can feel the breathing sensation the most. And rest in awareness of that part. Let us come home to ourselves. Our uh, senses are outgoing, as in they're always searching, scanning, gathering inputs. from outside. Let's take a U-turn. And look inward. Nothing mysterious. Nothing mystical, just watch your breath. Wanting to get some mystical experience, Something entirely different or expectations that come in the way.
there is nothing that stays. Even if we were to get into an extraordinary mystical state, it doesn't stay. We don't stay there. Everything changes. And so we allow things to change and we observe. That's all. Palms to the heart center. Namaskar. Tilting your head forward. And gently open your eyes. Inhaling, arms by the side, palms down, looking up. Exhaling, arms coming down to the chest, looking down. Inhaling up. Exhaling down. Inhaling up. Exhaling down. Inhaling up. Exhaling. One last round. Inhaling up. Exhaling down. Release. Come to cat posture. Tuck your toes in and lift the knees off the mat just a bit. Five, four, three, two, one. Drop your knees down. Take a deep breath. Exhale. Inhaling, look up. Allow the spine to go down. Exhaling, chin to the chest. Allow the spine to go up. Four more rounds. As you look up, abdomen completely relaxed. As you look down and spine goes up, Abdomen fully engaged. After completing, take a deep breath, exhale. Come to plank posture. Shoulders right over the wrist. Abdomen fully engaged. Now with the rest of the body being the same, only the head moves. Inhaling, look up. Exhaling, look down. And you will feel your abdomen even more engaging as you exhale and look down, chin to the chest. Inhaling up. Exhaling down, total five rounds. Only the head moves. As you exhale, abdomen engages even more. After completing five rounds, drop in is down cat posture. Vajrasana. Take a deep breath, exhale. Two more deep breaths. If Vajrasana is not comfortable, sit in Sukhasana for the head tilting Kriya. Inhaling center, exhaling, right ear goes to the right shoulder, 
inhaling center left ear goes to the left shoulder inhaling center four more rounds shoulders always relaxed shoulders are not moving at all only the head moves After completing four to five rounds, take a deep breath, exhale. Cat posture. Inhaling center, exhaling, turn your head to the right. Inhaling center, exhaling, turn left. Inhaling center, four more rounds. Take a deep breath, exhale. Come to Sukhasana. Stretch the legs to the front. Place your palms behind you, shoulder width apart. Bend your knees, feet hip width apart. Place your feet on the ground, hip width apart. Next inhalation, lift the hips up and bring the thighs and the upper body parallel to the ground, look up. Inhaling center, exhaling, turn to the right side. Turn and look at the right wall. Inhaling center, exhaling, turn and look at the left wall. Inhaling center, four more rounds. After completing, slowly lower your seat bones down, Sukhasana. Take a deep breath, exhale. Namaskar, Mudra. Come up to standing. Release arms. Stand relaxed. Let the orientation be inward, as in keep returning back to the attention to your own body, breath and emotions. Take a deep breath, exhale. Front of the mat, Tadasana.
Let's spend a minute in Tadasana. Keeping your feet together. Standing tall. If there is an invisible thread that is connecting to the roof of your head. And gently the thread is being pulled up. Your chin is parallel to the ground, shoulders relaxed. Shoulders are not traveling up, only the roof of the head travels up. And for that, the extension happens all the way from your inner arch on your feet. The inner arches are activated. You can gently apply pressure on your big toes or on the balls of your feet below the big toes. And when you gently apply a little bit of pressure, the inner arches wake up. And that forms the core foundation. And you can feel the inner thighs being activated, stabilizing your hips. Make micro adjustments with the hips so the weight is even. Shoulders right over the hips, head right over the spine. Close your eyes just a bit, unless you feel not stable. Close your eyes and become familiar with Tadasana sensations in your body. Gently open your eyes. Namaskaram. Three rounds of Surya Namaskara. If the mind wanders, gently bring it back to your breath, body sensations, emotions.
after completing three rounds, separate your feet comfortably so you can stand relaxed with comfortable balance on your feet. With the feet closer, you need more attention for balance with feet apart. You can relax with better balance. And the feet apart relaxed posture is so you can watch your breath. The effects of three rounds of Sri Namaskar on your breath slowly changing. The amount of uh, energy, the blood circulation that is needed for Sweden's kind of practice is no longer needed. And so the control system the energetic control system our body mind. is adjusting and you watch it. That's all. Three deep breaths. Let us approach backward bending postures. Let's start with feet hip width apart. So we can approach back bends with more balance than Hastavutana that we practice in Sri Namaskara is the first move that we make from Namaskara Mantra. Same we'll practice but with the feet apart. Namaskar Mantra. Inhaling Hasta Uttana back bend and hold the posture. Now, first movement should be the hips moving forward. Second should be the chest moving front and up. And arms going far back as much as you can. Five. Four. Three, two, one. Inhale center. Exhaling, release the arms. Take a deeper exhale. So, Neil, how is your uh, knee feeling when you are in back bend like that? You're okay? Thumbs, give thumbs up if you're okay in back bends. Fine, okay. okay, good. Oh, all right. Let's proceed. Now let us um, add to Astavtana. Okay, in one question. Yeah. Uh, when I bend backwards and when I try to exhale, I feel uh, my stomach and chest is shivering. It's yeah. kind of that's natural. Yes. Um, to begin with, um, who was speaking? Nirmala. 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 Yes, Nirmala. Um, yeah, it is quite normal to begin with Nirmala as you practice. Uh, the body has intelligence to adjust and get stronger and flexible. Uh, so these postures will, the experience will change for you. So that is guaranteed. So please continue. And it is quite normal to begin okay. with. Yeah, quite normal to begin with. And Srini also made this observation. Um, <clears throat> let us actually explore this a bit. 
arms up, press the palms. So I want to do this in only one breath. So what we're going to do is inhaling, in, after you inhale, you're going to get into a back bend. And for exhalation, you're going to straighten up. Take a big inhalation and go into a back bend. And hold, adjust for a sec, and then exhaling, come up straight. Release the arms. What I'm trying to point out is when you're inhaling, your abdomen muscles, our abdomen is getting pushed down. And when your abdomen muscles are pushed down, they are giving more of a support for your lumbar spine when you're in back pain. And so we're going to repeat this. I want you to notice the stability or how it feels different, maybe stable or not, how it feels different when you are bending your back with Full inhalation. Arms up. Press the palms. Take a full inhalation and get into back bend. And hold it as long as you're comfortably holding it. And when you want to exhale, inhaling, uh, exhaling, straighten up and release arms. Nirmala, how did you feel? Was there any difference? Better, but not uh, but still I have that sensation. Oh, no worries, no worries. Uh, um, as you can see, if you're able to support with your breath, you feel a little, little different. Which means as long as your body is able to support, grow to support in the posture, you feel comfortable. So the only um, solution is practice. We wanted to get uh, a bit deeper. Um, the important elements, as I said, hips moving forward, chest moving forward. I don't know how many, since I don't see you. I want us to first practice this. Hands on your waist, hands on your waist. Move the hips forward. And move the chest forward, taking the elbows to the back. Elbows to the back, so move the chest forward. Are you able to feel the chest moving forward? And then now get into a gentle back bend, gently look up. The chest now moves a little bit higher with the shoulder blades going closer. Shoulder blades getting closer, pushing the chest forward and up. Five, four, three, two, one. Inhaling center. Exhaling, release sounds. Now, what are we trying when I, when we say move the chest to the front? We are really trying to move the thoracic spine, straighten it up to move the chest to the front. So your lumbar curve is already aligned to back bend, whereas the chest spine is going the other way, and we are trying to lengthen and stretch it. And um, even if it won't go into a full back bend, you're trying to stretch it up. And the cues that I'm giving, move the chest to the front, is something I want you to understand as straighten up the thoracic spine. Stretch it up. And when you do, uh, when trying to move the chest to the front and up and squeezing the shoulder blade in the back. See if you can feel this one more time. Hands on your waist. Inhaling, hips moving forward, chest moving forward and up. You don't have to drop your head, keep looking up. Consciously move the chest to the front and up as you squeeze the shoulder blades together on the back. Five, four, three, two, one. Inhaling center. Exhaling, release arms. By the way, keeping 
um, the palms are around your waist can give you a bit more support. Not sure if how many of you felt the thoracic spine extension when you tried to get the chest to the front and up. Um, <clears throat> those who are um, like Nirmala, um, there is one more thing that we could perhaps do to safely hold hands on your waist. Now place your palms on your glutes with the fingers pointing down fingers pointing down and your um, bottom of the palm can be as high as you can comfortably place them. Fingers are pointing down toward the ground. Elbows are pointing toward the back. Now let's get into a back bend. Inhaling, gently with your palms, move the hips forward. Squeeze the shoulder blades together, straighten up the thoracic spine and gently look up five those who are really comfortable drop your head four three two one inhaling center exhaling release arms this is another way at least you can bring a little more support to the lumbar region uh, Nirmala, is is this giving you a better support with your? Yes, palm? this is this is much much better. Yes. Okay. Um, now you know that those are the muscles that need to be stronger. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, that's now that you solve that problem. Simply work on that; it, it will get stronger. There's no question about it. Sure. Uh, thanks. The body is too intelligent not to do that. Thank you. Arms up, palms facing the front. When we had palms pressing together, that would have given you a certain sense. But now we are going to have the palms not pressing against each other, as in Hastavuttana. Here, your arms are free to fall down towards the ground. This is going to be a bit more a different experience. Inhaling, hips to the front, right? Chest moving toward the front and up. Arms falling toward the back and down. Five, four, three, two, one. Inhaling up. Exhaling, release out. Take a deep breath, exhale. Separate your feet, prasarita stands. Both your feet are flat and the feet are as far comfortably away without the weight of your feet collapsing into the inner arches. So, Separate your feet as comfortably wide with the feet flat, with the inner arches still active and keeping the shape. Big toes slightly pointing inward, hands on the waist. Take a deep breath. Um, Sunil, um, if your back of your knee stretches a lot, you can slightly bend the knees as we bend forward. Inhale. Exhaling, halfway bending forward. You can slightly bend the knees, Sunil, if the back of your knees are tight. Um, sorry, inhaling, come up. I gave, I thought I gave instruction to bend forward. Straighten up, take a deep breath. We are doing, we are going to do a counter, which is to bend forward half. Inhale. Exhaling, halfway bending forward. And you can slightly bend the knees if your um, hamstrings are tight or back of the knee or calf muscles are tight, you can slightly bend the knees. Look to the front, flatten the back. Five, four, 
three, two, one. Inhaling, come on. Take a deep breath. Now, next time we're going to go all the way down. Prasarita Pasatana. Depending on how comfortable you are with your hamstrings, back of the knee and calf, you might have to slightly bend the knees to not get into um, or not cross the edge. If you're really comfortable, keep the knee straight. Inhale, center. Exhaling, bending fully forward. Hold your elbows. Right hand holding the left elbow, left hand holding the right elbow. And elbows are hanging loose, head hanging loose. Those who are comfortable, keep the knees straight. Five. Four, three, two, one. Hands on your waist. Inhaling, come up. Bring your feet closer. Relax before we go back for a back bend from Pasarika stance. Release your arms. Stand relaxed. Take a deep breath. Prasarita stance, broad stance. Now, hands on your waist. Those who need support can place the palms on the glutes with fingers pointing down. Others can simply have your thumbs touch each other on the back. Inhaling, hips moving forward, chest moves forward and up as you get into a back bend. Those who can slightly can bend the knees and get deeper into the back bend. Five, four, three, two, one. Inhaling, come on. Exhaling, release the arms, bring your feet closer, stand relaxed. Such backward bends, you might be, as you are watching your emotions and the energetic state, you might feel more energized. Depends on where you are. I don't want you to have a fixed result in mind. <clears throat> Whatever is the energetic state that you observe. Take another deep breath, exhale. Feet close, um, feet six inches apart. Hands on your waist. Walk your right foot by two feet to the back. Now with the split legs, we are going to do a forward bend and a backward bend to balance our hips. <clears throat> now the front knee stays straight um, in the practice, in this practice, hands on your waist. Now get your thumbs to touch each other on the back. Elbows pointing to the back. Now, next inhalation, back bend. Shifting your weight more. You might be shifting more onto your back foot. Raise the chest up with the more balance that you have on your feet. And when you do that, you might bring more balance between the feet. Five, four, three, two, one. Inhaling center. Bring the hands by the waists, elbows pointing to the sides. 
take a deep breath. Now hold your elbows on your back. Behind your back, hold your elbows. Those who are really comfortable, Namaskar Mudra on the back with the fingers pointing up. Parshvatthana practice. Inhale. Exhaling, keeping the front knee straight, halfway bending forward. Keep the front knee straight, halfway bending forward. Look to the, look to the front, flatten your back. Keep the front knee straight. Uh, Sunil, you might want to slightly bend the knee. Inhale, exhaling, chin to the shin. Head down. Parshvatthana, five. Four, three, two, one. Inhaling up. Hands on the waist. Walk your right foot forward. Release your arms. Stand relaxed. The the postures with one foot to the front and one foot to the back. You can use those postures to balance your hip. <clears throat> we feel different on the different sides and if there are imbalances on the hips, you can work through such imbalances with postures with a one foot to the front and like Veera Bhadrasana, Parshvatona, Parshvatona or a few examples. Ashta Chandrasana, Abdha Chandrasana. Take a deep breath. Feet six inches apart, hands on your waist. Walk your left foot back by two feet. Both your hips are still facing front. Hands on your waist. Get your thumbs to touch each other on the back. Next inhalation, back bend. Elbows pointing down to the ground. Uh, the weight is not all the weight is not on the back foot. As you raise your chest, the weight kind of balances. Five, four, three, two, one. Inhaling, come up. Take a deep breath, exhale. Namaskar mudra on the back or holding the elbows on the back, whichever is comfortable. Inhale. Exhaling, keeping the front knee straight, unless there is a problem. Otherwise, slightly bend the knees, bending forward halfway. Look to the front, flatten your back. Inhale, exhaling, chin toward the shin. And then head down. Five. Four. Three. Two. One, inhaling, come up. Hands on the waist. Walk forward. Release arms, stand relaxed. What we will uh, approach next is Urdhva uh, Mukha Shwanasana. We will approach Urdhva Mukha Shwanasana from uh, flying posture. Front of the mat. Tadasana. Namaskara Mudra. Inhaling back then. Exhaling forward bend. Inhaling right foot back. 
left foot back. Now, be on the toes on your back. Slowly release the hips down and look toward the front. Be on the toes on the back. Release the hips as far down as you can. Now chest is going through your arms and now consciously lift the roof of your head toward the ceiling, taking your ears away from your shoulders as much as you can. Your ears are going away from the shoulders. Now gently squeeze the shoulder blades on your back. Gently. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Come to plank posture. Drop your knees down. Vajrasana. This is preparation for Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Next time when we reach that, what we will do is, um, in Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, the toes are pointing to the back and you are kind of pressing down on your ankle. Few things to note. The gap between your ears and shoulders as much as you can. There is a tendency for in Urdhva Mukha to have the shoulders closer to the ears. So consciously allow the shoulders to drop down, which means either the shoulders are dropping down or the head moves toward the ceiling. You're not looking up so much as moving the roof of your head toward the ceiling. That is one point. Second point, your palms are shoulder width apart that should allow your chest to move through your arms toward the front. If you can, your chest moves through the arms toward the front. And um, knees are off the mat. And finally, the toes are pointing to the back and you're pressing down on the top of your feet, which are on the mat. That is Urdhva Mukha Shwanasana. You would have seen dogs stretching like this. Take a deep breath. Cat posture. Plank posture. Come to a proper plank, strong plank. Now from there, without moving your toes, drop your knees down. Stretch your ankles back, pointing to the toes to the back. Now move your hips forward and down. Move the chest through the arms to the front and you're looking to the front wall. Now consciously, Take the head higher, away from the shoulders. Gently start squeezing the shoulder back, shoulder blades on the back and take the knees off the mat. Pressing down on your top of your feet. Uddha Mukheshwanasana, five. Shoulder blades squeezing gently on the back, four, three, Two, one, cat posture. Drop your knees down, cat posture. Vajrasana. Lie down on your back. After Urdhva Mukha, simply lying down on your back itself might feel, you might feel uh, as a counter posture to Urdhva Mukha. Be 
gently hug the knees, hold the knees closer to the chest. Hug the knees and rock back and forth. Side to side. Settle back down and hold the knees tightly. Next exhalation, reach with your arms and circle your knees with your arms as tightly as you can. Watch your breath. With your abdomen, uh, head relaxed. Uh, Sanjay, leave the head relaxed down on the ground. With the small head lifted up. Yes, leave the head down. Simply relax. Five, four, three. Two, one, spread your arms, shoulder height. Next exhalation, drop your knees to the right elbow. Keep both shoulders on the ground and look over your left shoulder. Once you reach the final posture, no more movements needed. Your spine is in a twist with the shoulders being fixed to the ground. As you take your knees toward your right elbow, your hips are turned sort of 90 degrees. Your upper hip is pointing toward the ceiling. Lower hip is on the ground, lower side of the hip. And your entire spine is in a twist. And feeling that twist, rest. Five. Four. Three. Two. One, bring the knees back to the center. And with the next exhalation, drop your knees toward your left elbow. Keep both shoulders on the ground. And look over your right shoulder. And once you have, if your right shoulder has come off the ground, gently, Get the shoulders to go down. And look over your right shoulder. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Bring the knees to the center. Release the knees and proceed to Shavasana. Make any final movements that you would like to make before settling down in Shavasana. Let your body go and relax.
Come up to sleeping. Eyes closed. Any meditative posture. Take your hands back. Inhale, going taller, exhaling, bending forward from the hips, thanking Mother Earth. Inhaling, come up. 